we have the following on the agenda. Um, we have a welcome speech by Erisima, an exhibition introduction by myself, and we have a guest speech by Deji Akin Pelu. We're going to have a music interlude, of course, meet the artists, then also we're going to have an exhibition, the exhibition video. We're going to have comments and Q&A, and of course, closing remarks. So, um, Ian, do you want to take over or do you want me to do that? Uh, no, I, I think you're doing a fantastic <laughs> job <laughs> with me. <laughs> all right, great. So once again, you're all welcome to the Visual Art Exhibition opening. It's Mentopedia. It's an art exhibition on urban design and, and brain health. Um, the session was put together most especially because of the GBHI community. It's actually an hybrid event. So we're having it on site and virtual as well in Lagos, Nigeria. So. Um, there's going to be a welcome speech by Erisima Leroy, and Erisima Leroy is an associate professor of geriatric psychiatry, working with people with, who, have, who have developed dementia. She's a faculty member of the Global Brain Health Institute, Trinity College, Dublin, and Erisima is my GBHI mentor. Give it up for Erisima. Over to you. Thank you very much, Funmi, and welcome everybody. And it's a tremendous honor to be asked to welcome you all to Mentopedia, presented by Funmi from the class of 21 Atlantic Fellow for Equity in Global Brain Health. So um, I've been Funmi's mentor for the past year, and we've had a very interesting and challenging time together as we've worked together to figure out her pilot. And some of you have heard what she's going to be doing in the pilot, which is looking at brain health issues in traffic wardens in Lagos. And these traffic wardens are people who are daily exposed to very high levels of traffic related air pollution, because Lagos is a city with more than 20 million people and one of the most congested areas in the world. So you can see this is a very important question about urban design and how it relates to brain health and mental health of the people living in this environment. And it's very much what the aim of Mentor, Mentopedia is, is to showcase the findings of a very innovative brain health case study about urban design and mental health in Lagos and using an artistic approach. And this is possible because of course, Funmi, as you know, is both a public health specialist with an interest in brain health, as well as an artist. So it's been over a decade since Sir Nigel Crisp, who, is, who was the former chief executive of the NHS in the, in the UK, published a, a report that concluded that the arts and health are and should be firmly recognized as being integral to health and healthcare provision and healthcare environments. So that was more than a decade ago. And since that time, I think we've made tremendous strides in thinking about linking the arts and health. And I think in GBHI, it's something we talk about daily because of the input of our artists and, and creative members of our community. And I think one of the markers of this is the very uh, influential milestone report that was published last year, which is the WHO's report on arts and health. And I'd encourage you all to read that. It was led by Daisy Fancourt of London, if you haven't already, because it really reinforces the kind of work that we're seeing presented here today by Funmi and Mentor Media. And uh, one of the broad themes that comes from that report is looking at prevention and promotion and the role of arts in terms of prevention and promotion of health. And the work presented by Fumi today falls under, under that umbrella because it's really about the interplay between aspects of urban design, brain health, and mental, mental well-being taken from an artistic perspective. So just a couple of words about Fumi. So she's a public health leader in the field of planetary health and its relation to brain health in sub-Saharan Africa. And she has extensive experience in nonprofit leadership and management and community-based dementia awareness programs and training programs. And much of her aspiration is to raise awareness of brain health and mental well-being, particularly in the context of the environment and the planetary aspects. And she's had extensive experience in art interventions programs for older people, and she's done research in public health. And of course, as I mentioned, she's an artist, as you will see today. And finally, what energizes Funmi? Funmi is energized by educating and creating awareness that leads to healthier practices and attitudes, particularly regarding brain health, as well as fine arts practice and how they integrate health and science. So 
Welcome everybody and I hope you, I'm sure you will enjoy this wonderful program that Fumi has prepared for us. Thank you very much. Okay, well, uh, Funmi is doing a much better job at um, introducing this than I am. I, I had, I think it was all set to give a, a, a little um, summing up at the end, and I hadn't noticed that I was to be the moderator. So, so Funmi is sending me very understandably um, uh, pointed emails, <laughs> showing me that I'm to be the. So, um, anyway, I'm delighted to. Um, you know, introduce uh, Funmi. Uh, Ira has done it very well indeed. So uh, please introduce the exhibition to us, Funmi. All right, thank you so much, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> all right. So a week ago, I was asked um, what Mentopedia meant and where it came from. Um, it actually was formulated by myself and my good friend. Uh, for me, it's a metaphoric word for an encyclopedia of brain and mental health prevention. So the art exhibition, Mentopedia, touches on a relatively under-recognized um, aspect of public health, and that is the built environment, organ design, and its impacts on brain health and well-being. You know, this reminds me of the sick building syndrome, where building occupants suffer from symptoms of illness from the building in which they work or reside in. I'm very much excited about the actualization of this exhibition. It was only a thought during the onset of my GBHI fellowship year in 2020. Um, during sessions with my mentor, my GBHI mentor, Professor Eric Simaleroy, we worked together in you know, setting my action plan for the year. And she said to me, I'll paraphrase, he said, you have to make it, you know, you're, you have to make your vision realistic. You, ha you have to see it. You have, you have to be able to feel it. And I want to say thank you, Arsima, for that. And thank you to the GBHI Mentorship Scheme also. So this exhibition details results from my recent study on urban design and mental health, Lagos as a case study. I had stumbled into the Center of Urban Design and Mental Health, and I saw several studies for the said topic for cities in Europe, Canada, Australia, Asia, America, but none from Africa. I was motivated to carry out a study here in Nigeria and put a case study from Africa on the center's resource. I contacted the center and work commenced. So in the last five months, I had interviewed with city planners, architects, health professionals, public health specialists, and other professions who reside in Lagos. Data was analyzed and the, results, um, the report drafted and I must not fail to mention and recognize my co-authors, Dr. Nena Ike. She's not here today. She's an urban planner from Lund University and Co. The aim of this exhibition is to first raise awareness on brain health and mental health, also to educate and enlighten professionals in this space, um, city planners, sustainability and health professionals on the importance of urban design and brain health and how they are related and lastly, to educate the general public on the impact of brain spaces and to their brain health and mental health as well. You know, results from the study showed that the following design factors influences mental health, brain health, and well-being in Lagos, Nigeria. They as follows: transportation, including traffic congestion, reliable public transportation, housing, including affordability of housing, water supply, electricity, homelessness, access to adequate housing, fear of forceful eviction, and also access to public spaces, availability and access to green and blue spaces, safety and security, wetland protection, amongst others. In line with these results, I have highlighted a few comments from the study respondent, and I would love to share with you today. One respondent said, as far as mental health is concerned, the biggest issue in Lagos is traffic. How do we redesign traffic so that people do not spend the whole day in traffic and miss out on appointments, being anxious and even coming up with other non-communicable diseases such as hypertension or heart disease? Another respondent had this to say. As a planner, 
if you look at Lagos, I'm sure you will find areas that are zoned for green spaces in the original plan, but they do not exist. They have been commercialized rapidly. Other factors reported by the study include ignorance and stigmatization, the perception of development by government and politicians as brick and mortar. The complete publication of this study will be out on yet to be confirmed dates in August, that's next month. And the link will be shared with the GBHI community in due course. I'm also pleased to let you know that the exhibition is an hybrid event and as such is taking place on site and will be open tomorrow at the Innovation and Health Hub at the Occupational Therapy Building of the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Yaba, Lagos, Nigeria. And it will be opened by the acting MD of the institution. The Innovation Hub was initiated and designed by our very own Senior Atlantic Fellow, Kunle Adewale. I'm thankful to my co-artists and collaborators today, Israel Padumo, Ajay Samson, Omar Sophia Ibinovia, for joining forces with me to create these themes so beautifully in their paintings. I also want to thank Kunle Adewale, Michael and Nagerson for their support in designing this exhibition. Kindly know that all exhibited work today are for sale and feel free to contact the organizers for more details. The link to the e-catalog will be pasted on the chat function for your use. Thank you very much. You're all welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Funmi. Um, what a fantastic effort it really was um, to do this. And a few public health artists there are in the world, so <laughs> you're, you're, you're unique. So I'm delighted now to um, welcome uh, Deji Akinpelu. And Deji is a photographer yeah, and documentary filmmaker with an interest in development, particularly from the perspective of the urban poor. And he is a co-founder of Rethinking Lagos Initiative. So Deji, we're delighted to have you here and really looking forward to hearing from you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I am highly delighted to be here. Um, okay, thank you for me. Okay, I guess that's my slide. Great. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity um, to be here. Like um, you rightly said, my name is Deji Akepelo, co-founder of Thinking Cities in Lagos, Nigeria. And uh, I count this as a very wonderful opportunity for us to be able to highlight some of the things um, that we have worked on in the last five years um, concerning advocacy for better, for better urban space um, in the city of Lagos. Uh, we are an advocacy group. Uh, we work with researchers, um, entertainers, artists um, to communicate innovation in urban development. And um, of course, of, of great importance to all of this is um, having a strong mental health, people who are strong mentally in the city. So we can move on to my next slide. Don't let me take so much time doing the introduction. Next slide. So I will just like to welcome you to Lagos. Um, Lagos is a city of 20 million people. Uh, like we always say, it depends on who is giving that data. Uh, sometimes they say it's 18 million. Some people say 22 million. Uh, but that we are not yet sure of. 70% um, of the population um, actually reside in slum and close to 60 to 70% reside in informal and slum settlements. And also informal businesses thrive, um, thrive a lot um, in, the, in the system. Um, you have artisans, um, traders, like the picture you see above there, you know, traders on the street. Um, we have so many small scale businesses, um, informal transportation group um, uh, exist in the city. It is also regarded as the fifth largest economy in Africa. Um, the common shocks and stresses of the city, uh, like you've heard before now, um, flooding, traffic congestion, forced eviction um, because of the migration and um, um, uh, the battle for land in the city of Lagos. Um, housing development, um, you find out that um, quite a number of people who live in slums and shanty areas are often uh, displaced um, by the city authority. 
minority inequality, poor healthcare system as some of the several um, issues, power and all of that, as some of the shocks and stresses of, uh, of the city. Um, it's not any intention to paint the city black, but uh, research has shown and has proven that Lagos is the second most stressful city in the world after Mumbai. Um, in a study of over 100 countries by Vae.com. Um, so this just this gives you this gives a validation to some of the shocks and stresses um, that we have um, mentioned. If you look at the research, it talks about um, it looks at um, economic empowerment, um, government, um, go the issues of governance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's the second most stressful city in the world. Next slide, please. Yeah, however, in Lagos, life goes on. Um, the show must continue. In fact, Nigerians are regarded as one of the happiest people, the most happy people um, in the world, if, if, despite all these um, um, issues that um, were raised. According to the World Happiness Report, it says, nevertheless, it is worthy of note that amidst the low satisfaction of Nigerians on their economic situation and standard of living, some of the key factors that are pivotal in determining the level of happiness continues to remain above average as revealed by the poll. It says, it is noted that the key components includes what? Religion. Um, the city is a very religious city and people, rather than look up to government to provide the basic needs of the people, um, the people rather go to churches, mosque and pray to God um, for their security, for their next meal. So there's a whole lot of dependence on religion. Social interaction is another thing. This is what people use in keeping their mental health together in this part of the world. We, we are very communal. Uh, we interact a whole lot with our neighbors and uh, we, believe, we believe so much in family and um, interaction. So in the city of Lagos, no matter how bad it is, uh, you may find it very interesting that there's a party going on every day, everywhere. You understand? Even in the poorest uh, of communities, the people still celebrate. <laughs> you understand? The people still party. They still celebrate. They still hang out together. Physical health. Um, a major big surprise, uh, although generally for, the, for Africa, you know, when COVID happened, we, we thought that it was really going to go very bad. Um, um, even scientists actually worried that in Africa, uh, we are going to have a disaster. But interestingly, I mean, COVID isn't as bad as what we, uh, Europe experienced here in Africa. So the physical health of the people and all the general health, you know, um, seems to be fairly okay, you know, but health infrastructure, and maybe we are not really even taking into account how healthy the people are, but they're saying here that the physical health of the people actually matters. Personal security. Yes, there's a lot of insecurity in the city of Lagos, but the trend is such that um, the people have taken it upon themselves. Rather than waiting for the state to protect them, they decide to protect themselves. You see things like community policing, um, cultural group um, coming up with security infrastructure to actually protect themselves. We have local uh, security outfits all over the country, all over the city of Lagos, trying to protect people. For the people, for some people who are of the middle class or upper class, they find themselves living in gated estates um, where they now provide their own security. So, by and large. Legotians have found a way to make life happen for them and to keep the city uh, sane for them to live in. However, uh, should we say at this point that government shouldn't brace up to its responsibility? Should governance come, shouldn't governance come to the people? So that will take me to my next slide, which is about achieving a balanced mental health in the city of Lagos um, through urban planning. In the last five years, um, Rethinking Cities as an organization, we've advocated for three things in the city of Lagos. One, to make Lagos an inclusive city. 
to include gender perspective in the urban planning of the city and generally attain what you would rather call a sustainable city, use it going by um, green ideas. Um, talking about inclusive city, the vision of the government um, is to become Africa's um, model mega city. But one of the challenges that we have um, raised is that the vision is not inclusive. The activities, the innovations, and the drive of the government in terms of infrastructural development is not taken into consideration. Like I told you before, 70% of the population is domain resides in informality in terms of workplace and in terms of housing. So inclusive city in terms of making housing affordable, in terms of you building um, infrastructure that is affordable for this um, teeming 70% population is something that is very pivotal to improving the mental health of the people of Lagos. Um, the housing scheme embarked upon by the government is way out of the reach of um, this high population. Um, I can't do my maths right now, but I wish I could do the, 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 the housing, housing by government amounts to like 22 million naira. Uh, I wish I have the dollar rate that I could have given you, but I, I didn't prepare for that. But it's definitely out of the reach of the poor. Inclusive waste management is another thing. Waste management, um, even though the city government had introduced the use of big trucks to pick up waste in different communities in the city, it is however worthy of note that um, these ventures called PSPs, private uh, companies who come to pick up waste have not been effective in um, informal settlements and poor communities of the city. Um, so waste management is very lopsided. Uh, and is not inclusive of um, the informal workers um, who are largely responsible for picking up a whole lot of waste. Literacy, education, uh, even for the, for the young and the older generation remains a key challenge. Uh, for the reason of time, I may not be able to go into a, whole, a lot of these things, um, but just this just to give you an, a general view of, of this. Affordable intermodular transportation. Even though the state government has begun to start exploring different means of transportation, including the use of waterways and the rail system, um, this has not over over time now. This hasn't proven to be affordable to a lot of people, um, and the rail system in the city of Lagos is way behind in terms of um, the number of people that it has to cater for. Um, like you know, urban cities like Lagos, oh, okay, yeah, I've run out of time. In urban cities like Lagos, um, have a lot of people coming. But just to round up, gender perspective, it is important that the city begins to look at um, how you can make the city work for the female gender and young people. And so I'll just stop. Uh, I think I can stop at that, you know. So just to make the city more accessible to the genders. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Deji. That Ian, you're on mute. Yes. Sorry, um, uh, just to say thank you very much, Deji. That was such an inspiring and fascinating talk. Um, I mean, just your data from the World Happiness Report about in spite of these terrible environmental challenges, the, the levels of happiness, <laughs> the quality of life in certain respects, in spite of the objective quality of life, shows us that the human spirit, <laughs> um, as captured by you and Funmi, and we're about to hear from Kunle shortly, it's, it truly is inspiring about how human beings can rise to adversity and adapt to it and make the best of it. What, what a fantastic presentation. So I just want to say thank you for the amazing work you're doing and for presenting it to us. Now, we're going to, I'm delighted to say now we have a, a musical interlude, a musical break. Uh, and this music is called, very appropriately, You're Not Alone. 
It's a music video. It's a music yeah. video by the Arts in Medicine Project, co-written by COVID-19 frontliners who are resident in Lagos. Uh, it's intended to inspire, comfort, and uplift those directly affected by the pandemic. So I'm delighted to, I'm looking forward to hearing this very much. After the rainfall, sun will shine again. Don't lose hope. Hand in hand, yes, we can make the world a better place. Help is not so far, only just look within. Well, thank you very much. That was great. That was great. A slight hiccup at the beginning. Um, thank you very much for that. Uh, very uplifting. Very, very fine. So I'm delighted now um, to welcome someone who's really well known to all of us here. Um, Kunle is not only an artist, he's a writer of a an amazing autobiography. He's a father, <laughs> he's a GBHI senior fellow, and he is an inspiring um, colleague who we're proud to have as part of the GBHI community. So I'm going to hand over to you, Kunle, to introduce the exhibition and some of, some of the exhibits from that. It's so lovely to see you again. Thanks so much, Dan. Um, Written on this side of the world to everyone. Uh, my name is Kunla Dewala. I'm a visual artist and I'm based in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, first and foremost, I want to congratulate all of the artists who came together to, you know, put up this amazing show together today. Um, and congratulations to GBHI, TCD, and also UCSF. So I will be introducing the artists. Uh, who actually are uh, part of the exhibition Mentopedia, which is an art exhibition of urban design and brain health. Congratulations to you guys. So I'm going to start with um, Israel, Israel Padono. Israel is a studio based contemporary mixed media artist in Badagri, Lagos, Nigeria, whose body of work is an ongoing conversation on subtle narrative identity 
and redemptive narratives that borders on the contemporary themes of mental health and identity. This body of works are inspired and rooted in its personal experiences with poverty and solitude from boyhood to the man that he is today. Coupled with his daily interaction with comp contemporary issues in the society that sharpen individuals' reality. Uh, that is about Israel Padono, one of the exhibiting artists today. Uh, we'll go straight up to Ajay Samson or Latunji. Ajay Samson is a multidisciplinary artist. His art minors human experiences or mirrors, sorry, his art mirrors human experiences through stories that were influenced by his cravings and childhood memories, story that impacted and influenced his perception of the society. His works can be perceived as a satirical attempt to discuss social issues using literary devices with the new print series. He engages the society in conversation and stories using himself as a point of vulnerability and thus healing from the traumas of his past. I present to you Aji Samson or Latuji. Uh, the third artist uh, in our portfolio include uh, Omon Sophia Igbinovia. Omon Sophia is a Nigerian artist for whom working with metaphor, acrylic and watercolor. It was, she was born in the 80s, she holds a higher diploma degree in computer graphics from Federal Polytechnic, Auchi Edo State, Nigeria. Omo trained under Dr. Bruce Ono Brakoya. Sophia had a debut solo exhibition titled A Witch in 2020. Her work has featured in several group exhibitions and sales and a solo exhibition. She has been featured in newspapers, books, and online platforms. These include the art of Nigerian women and African styles and culture magazine, to mention but a few. I present to you all, Omon Igbinovia. And the last but not the least, my mentee, my fellow fellow, and my um, fellow artist, Fumi Akidejoye. Fumi Akidejoye is a public health specialist and an Atlantic fellow for equity in brain health at the Global Brain Health Institute, Trinity College, Dublin. Fumi obtained a master in public health degree in environmental health sciences from the University of Ibadan, Nigeria. Our research in interests include hair pollution, urban design for human health, including other environmental risk factors for brain health. Fumi also practices as a visual artist where she uses her work to promote eco-consciousness and health. I present to you, Fumi Akindejoye. Happy viewing everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please, um, thank you so much, Mr. Kunle. So uh, I think we'll allow the artists to speak just uh, the way we had called them. Please, can you go back to the slide? They want to speak to their works. Thank you. So we'll call on Israel. Thank you, everyone. And so good to be here. And I really want to say a thank you, big time thank you to Fumi for you know giving me this opportunity to be part of this um, great program. So for this particular piece, I actually make use of um, the green and blue space. Because I realized that there is this um, this this gap on um, on traffic, and how we can actually mitigate the overdependence of um, road transportation on just Lagos roads alone. So with this piece, I'm just trying to bring this idea of actually seeing the waterways and using boats as a, uh, a not just an alternative to road transportation, but also as a therapeutic mean. Because when you travel to the, through the water, especially in legal states, you get exposed to this rich, you know, greens you see on the on the large vegetation walls, 
and also the sky, the blue sky. So I think of this conversation around you know seeing this meme as um, effective in the fight towards the you know the effect of um, over excessive exposure to um, traffic jams and legal states and the environment. So I want the government to actually find a way of making this you know secure for people because when you bring up such conversation around um, you know navigating your ways in Lagos, the first thing that comes to mind is you know it's not safe to travel by water. In fact, some of the conversation um, I had with people was that can you swim? They believe that it's only someone that can swim that should actually travel by water, which is very very not so right. But I understand the perception of people on that. So with this space, I'm actually you know bringing this idea for a change, and uh, and I hope that with this space. Um, we can actually get uh, a right response to um, this form of transportation in Nigeria, in Lagos State especially. Thank you very much. Thank you, Israel. We'll invite Ajay. Ajay. Are you here? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, it's such a Hi. great privilege to, to be on this platform. Um, I'm Aji once again. And um, for I started this series of print, news prints to you know expose and also discuss about my life experiences and you know also use it as a platform to connect to others who have similar experiences this work titled the price of happiness has dropped is a satire that discusses um, how in recent times uh, uh, pursuit of money and wealth as a definition for success has influenced how we um, live our lives and it's it's unbalanced nature has influenced our decision making okay um the new springs is focused on struggling even in an unhealthy way in every way possible to get money like it is in lagos people wake up by the week as early as 4 a.m rush to work you know and they get back home as late as 11 p.m., 12, sleep for two, three hours, and the routine continues, and they live like that for years, decades. And um, when they have money and houses, they define that as success. And sometimes they have health issues, mental issues, because of the stress and all that. And so this work basically focuses on um, redefining our success and priority. Um, they used to say that um, the biggest is the man who has life, you know, that, that can work. Is the man with the life um, that can have goals and achieve goals and set these and do that. So uh, this work is to re-emphasize the need for us to live a balanced life, check and balance everything we do, you know, and really define happiness, not by money, but by living a balanced life, healthy life. Mentally, you are okay. Financially, you are okay. All wise. That's that's just the basic. That's why um, we discuss different things. Like people now just want to be rich. Are they happy? Are they healthy? So that is basically what this um, piece is about. Um, once again. All right. Thank you very much, Samson Aji. I'll yeah, call right. on um, Sophia now for the sake of time. Lovely work. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. Yes, we can. Uh, yeah, oh, my name is Sophia. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm so happy to be part of the exhibition artist in this great um, exhibition. And... Um, my body of work is about, um, it's titled A Chill in the Hair, which is a continuous um, piece for my pandemic series. 
um, the work is like um, is about my story, like my experience during the lockdown, because I, I was kind of depressed during the lockdown because I was like 2020 was supposed to be like one of my most um, memorable year. Um, as an artist, I had a lot of shows planned for 2020. So due to the lockdown and the uh, pandemic stuff, and that made kind of shattered my my dreams and my plans. So I was I was really depressed. So um, but I was able to overcome the pressure with um, um, balloons with the help of balloons and the help of my little niece. So this work basically is just kind of this work basically. I think my mother, yeah, yeah. This work basically is just kind of, I'm just trying to give hope to people suffering with uh, mental, uh, mental health, like depression and other stuff, like that there is more to life, there is more hope and just kind of giving encouragement to people to stay positive that no matter their challenges, it, there is still more to life and there is still hope that we should just stay strong and have faith. Thank you. Thank you so much, Omar. Thank you. Now, Funmi, we need to hear you talk about this beautiful work. Okay, yeah, thank you, everyone. So um, basically what this work represents is um, the non-motorized transportation. As a public health person, I am big on healthy lifestyle and behavior. And cycling and walking is one way to do that. But the problem is where are the sidewalks? Where do we do that? It's not really available. So currently there is a, um, a bill ongoing to advocate for non-motorized transportation, you know, to become effective in Lagos, Nigeria. And so that's what this work represents. If we, if we are able to cycle in safe environments, then our, ment our well-being generally would improve. So you see the, the newspaper curtains, you know, they just represent in a metaphoric way how we're able to think and meditate to the clear head when we do our cycles or when we walk. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Funmi. Um, what remarkable pieces of art. So uh, thank you very much, Israel and Ajay and Sophia and Funmi. What, a, what an exhibition I wish. I wish we could be there to see the whole exhibition. Um, I'm delighted now to uh, hand over to our esteemed GBHI fellow, Karen, Karen Meenan, who's going to deal with the comments and questions and answers. So, so over to you, Karen. Thanks, Ian, and thanks for me, and thanks Irasima and Kunle and everyone here today, but especially to our artists. And that's the whole point of being here today is to thank Israel, and Fumi and Omo and Aji and Deji, thanks for a brilliant opening. And for the song, uh, the musical interlude was fantastic. And also you've given us a new word for our dictionary, Mentopedia. I think that's one that we're gonna to have to use again. Uh, well done Fumi, I think you created that one. And before we get into the questions and answers, there's just one little thing I wanted to say it was next Monday, while we all think we're having a bank holiday, in Ireland, and it's just the 2nd of August for everyone else, there is somebody who has a very special day named after them. And I'd like to introduce Kunle Adewale. Tell us about mm -hmm. the 2nd of August. What? <laughs> What's I, so special about that date? Um, August 2nd is a special day. It's a day named after me in the United States uh, to recognize the relevance of my work and contribution to knowledge in the field of heart and medicine and health, how art is being utilized and optimized in Nigeria, in the US, and in other parts of the world where I have been able to impact lives, communities, and also been able to partner with institutions in integrating creativity to promote well-being. I think that's the essence of the day. And uh, we're looking forward to celebrating the second edition of the Kunla Dewali Day next week, August 2nd, with the team, the Art for Cultural Diplomacy. Thanks so much. 
Well, Kunle, you were the only person I know in the whole world who's a day named after them. So, I mean, wow. <laughs> and actually, if you can see the images behind me here, these are paintings done by Kunle. One is Robin Williams and uh, one is Kevin Quaid. Who, and this is coming out as the uh, front cover of a book which will be published later on this year. Uh, so, Kunle, your art is just amazing. And thank you so much for all you do, not just for the world, for art, but the way you can incorporate arts, health, dementia care, and um, everything that you do is just so expressive and it's wonderful. Now, there's a load of things in the chat box, which I'd love to just mention. Um, great, you're getting great compliments, Deji, for your uh, opening remarks. Thank you so much for that. And um, that's Obiora as well has said that, and so has Kunle. Um, and Dominic uh, Trapel also. And the artwork is getting great compliments. Now, there's a couple of things. Oma, your use of yellow uh, struck everybody here. I wonder, would you like to come in and just maybe tell us about the composition of the piece? Nikki uh, Taylor noticed that and your composition of uh, yellow. Can you tell us a little bit about why you chose yellow in your piece? Um, the reason why I try to use yellow color is because of yellow stands for kind of hope for me. It's not my favorite color though, but it's, it tells a lot. If you like check the meaning of yellow, you see it has a lot of positivity in it. So I'm just trying to like, I just try to use the yellow color to like, Remember, to give um, hope to people. Yeah. yeah. Like I use the yellow color to give, to, to tell um, everyone that there's more to life and there's hope in whatever challenges we are going through. Excellent, because it is, while you say you uh, wanted to depict the lockdown and how you felt depressed, um, I could see from the uh, the way you created the, the piece, yes, there was certainly lockdown in it, but the yellow hopefulness was there too, it was wonderful, thank you so much. And um, the thank newspaper you. team, Aji, maybe you would tell us a little bit about that, loved it. Hi, Karen, I'm really sorry to cut you short. Um, there is a video to be played of the art exhibition. We have oh, over 24 works to be seen. So I'd love for if Ronan can play that video for us. Mm -hmm. So there'll be more questions to ask. Thank you.
wow <laughs> that was just fantastic thank you so much for me and all the artists that was just incredible so wow uh we're, that was just wonderful thank you so much can we get a copy of the video somebody's putting in the chat box and maybe we could look at it again at our leisure so we can read the inscription and also uh, have to have more time to uh, look at those beautiful pieces uh, if you could do that for me that'd be great and we're just at five to the hour now so i'd like to hand over to ian for a wrap-up of what's been a really amazing um last hour thank you so much for me thank you karen and thank you uh I am quite uh, literally, um, my breath is taken away by this session. I, um, the, the exhibition and the pre presentation of it and the art is just quite outstanding. So I've learned two things, one about the art um, and the artists. And the second thing is um, how not to run a meeting. <laughs> Because <laughs> I've been, I've given poor Funmi headaches by getting everything wrong, but it doesn't really matter. I don't really care because this has been such a special, outstanding um, occasion. So, I, you know, I, what do you say about, so what do I take away from this? So I, there's a sense, there's a sense in um, the power of the human mind to transform um, you know, I'm thinking of Sophia, um, you transforming your, your sadness, your isolation, your disappointment that you're, of the lockdown. You, you transform that into these beautiful works of art, chill in the air. That, that alchemy, spiritual alchemy, I would say. And then, you know, Israel, you know, all the images we tend to see of, you know, the, the environmental uh, negatives in, in Lagos, but suddenly you created this image of, you know, I want to go on that boat, I want to go on that, um, that incredible leafy boat. And, 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 and the, 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 the power of art to transform, in this case, the, the environment to transform the sense of opportunity. And then, you know, Aji, just how wittily and cleverly to target, you know, what, if you just said it, you know, the, or said it too obviously or strongly, that the fact that the pursuit of money is just such a, a dead road to unhappiness. And um, so you've, you've managed to, to kind of lift that out, lift that kind of the, the bind, the, the trap that many millions of people are kept in. Um, and then Funmi, I mean, I just was blown away by your art. I just, you know, <laughs> the, you know, the whole intersection of the environment with the, with your own, the human mind, with your own brain, the, the, the two way flow that you, know, you just portrayed so vividly the fact that who we are, that our brains are totally enmeshed with their environment. So this, and then, you know, so to, you know, then, you know, Kunle's and um, beautiful uh, depiction across much of his art and the recognition he's been given from this transformed harsh, harsh experiences in Kunle's autobiography in your early life, Kunle, how you've transformed them into this beautiful thing. So, you know, you know, we're in the supposed, um, you know, developed, you know, world. You're, 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 we, we have so much to learn from what you're doing there in, in Lagos. Um, I just uh, would so love to be there. I would so love to be in that exhibition. But my God, I've never seen any harnessing of the technology to pers to give one an immersive feeling of being in an exhibition. This was not just a mere Zoom looking at pictures. I felt transported, uh, you know, by a community of artists uh, in, in Lagos in a way that really, and I'm not just saying this, it really was very, very moving and very transformative for me. So um, I just, I, and, and I want to say, Funmi, how beautifully 
envisaged this hour was, how beautifully crafted, how carefully thought out, how incredibly well planned. And then you get a clutch like me coming on and messing it up, but the, the content is so beautiful, it didn't matter. So I, I don't know if I've got any more to say than just to say uh, you have taught us so much how proud I am to be a colleague of all of you and particularly our, our GBHI fellows. And I hope we'll get many other fellows from, from Nigeria. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much to all of you, particularly to phone me for putting this on. And uh, this, this, there's a huge amount of hope and transformation in this. Thank you very much. So, phone me, do you want to just uh, say a final word and then we'll, we'll log off or should we leave it to that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, I'm really so excited. And what can I say? But thank you. Thank you. You all made this happen. And if you were not here to see it, it would not be complete. So thank you. Thank you, everyone, for um, joining me today. I'm really grateful. And yeah, we're going to have an um, on site opening tomorrow. And I look forward to that as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. And all all the very best to all of you. All right. Bye-bye, Funley. Bye-bye. Bye, Kunle. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.